Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now, what I'm going to do here is pretty much show you uh, step by step what I'm going to do with my very first attempt at painting a Jason Voorhees mask. Now the mask that I'm going to be experimenting with is in fact from the Ruby's uh, mask and hood that you can normally get uh, through Ruby's. Uh, for about 60 bucks. It's a gigantic mask and the hood is absolutely huge. It's too big for my head. That's how big this thing is. But anyway, uh, I had it um, on the uh, hood in itself. But the straps that come with it seem to have bad glue joints. And they snapped off. So today they decided to snap off. So I said to myself, I'm going to go ahead. Because I've been wanting to um, you know, paint my own... Um, Jason Voorhees masks and what I did is I kind of started uh, sanding it and stuff like that because you know obviously the straps broke on it and it's a real cheap one so if I mess it up it's not a big loss but for this mask here is the only one that would actually fit that Ruby's uh, hood because that thing is absolutely massive but anyway what I uh, proceeded to do was actually sand it down now I don't have the original uh, what it used to look like. It had like a military green to it and a lot of um, black splotches all over it. It looked absolutely horrible. But anyway I kind of sanded it down so I'm going to show you what it looks like. And eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out the holes and then you know obviously paint it. We'll, we'll go through it step by step. But anyway this is what she looks like so far. And as you can see I got some close up shots of the sanding. Just to smooth it out. Now you'll notice that uh, this mask here, because it's a cheap mask, uh, the holes are not drilled out. So what I'll do on my next day off is actually drill out the holes and sand this down and play around with it a little bit. Uh, I will eventually get the uh, the chevrons here. As you can see, I kind of sand everything down a bit just to get it nice and smooth. And I'm going to hit it with primer. Um, thinking about doing this mask black. I'm going to show you what the actual hood looks like by picking up the camera. Okay, that's what the hood looks like right there, guys. So it's kind of gray in nature. Now, with that in mind, I was thinking about maybe doing the entire mask black with our red chevrons and stuff like that. But then again, I might go with the traditional almond color. I don't know yet. Uh, I'm thinking maybe almond because I'm pretty sure it's going to stand out pretty uh, nice on this uh, mask in itself. But like I said, I'm just playing around with it and stuff, just to get an idea. If I actually do a pretty decent job, I've got a bunch of other ones sitting on the wall there, and I'm gonna probably get some blanks and play around, and you know, you know, take it from there. But anyway, this is what I'm doing so far. Okay, as you can see right now, I sand it, and some of these spots are still a little rough here. Okay, like I said, it is a cheap mask. As you can see, it's very flexible. Okay. But it is one of the biggest ones, and it would fit that uh, particular uh, head. That head is absolutely gigantic. I don't think a standard Jason mask would actually fit on that, because that thing is so damn huge. But it is a nice looking display, just looking at it and stuff. But as you can see, I didn't really touch too much around the holes, because like I said, I am going to drill them out. Now you'll notice on the back here, the little spots here. Uh, they will be glued in because I got the strap sitting out there on a the table. Okay, I will hit it with some uh, Gorilla Glue once I get it painted and stuff like that. But I'm not sure if I actually want to spray paint it black or almond. Like I said, I might do the almond thing. I'm not 100% positive yet. But I think it'll look good. But then I got to uh, dirt it up and everything, grime it, uh, give it a nice dirty look. But anyway, I'm just going to play around with it, see what I can do with it, okay? But anyway, that is the idea right now, and I'm taking you through it step by step. Um, once I get a day off, which is probably Thursday, I'll jump on and I'm going to tap out the holes, and uh, I will get some supplies and begin painting it in itself, and I'm going to see how it turns out. Anyway, that is what we're doing so far, so stick with me on this, okay? Be right back. Hello everyone, welcome back. Now we're out here in the shed and we are in the process of drilling out the holes to this mask which I just picked out the right bit for it. Now keep in mind this is actually our first time so we're all going to walk through this together. 
when I do these videos, I know a lot of people who do these mass videos, they speed up their videos. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to do this, uh, you know, kind of slow so you can actually uh, go through and see what kind of mistakes I make. And at the same time, learn from them. So this first video is going to be like that. Then shortly after that, you know, obviously if I do more masks, then obviously we are going to get right through it rather quickly. A little bit more, more so than anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drill out the holes on this thing here. So let's go ahead and start. Now keep in mind, it's a real soft, flexible mask. So if I fuck up, no big deal in my opinion, okay? Let's see. Alright, it's, it's cutting through. Okay, hang on. Now we got construction going on because they're just building a brand new warehouse across the street from us. So it's going to be a little noisy. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, alright. Alright, I see that. That works okay. Well, that's a work in progress, guys. All right. So, with that in mind, gotta, oops. Okay. We're getting through it guys. Plastic out of the way. All right. All right. We're slowly getting there. We got all the uh, top holes drilled. As you can see, it's still got a little bit of burrs here. We got to clean them up a little bit. All right. As you can see. All right. All right. Okay. Continue with the with the holes. Now on the side here, they're going to be a little tricky because it's soft. There we go. Alright. Right, right about here? Okay. Hang on, let me just change my camera angle so I can see what I ain't doing. Okay. That's better. Alright. One thing about these, when you even if it's uh, the um, plastic base model uh, type of masks, once you punch a hole through it, they will catch. So you want to be careful on the speed. Alright. Alright. Not too bad. Because this is a really flexible mask. It makes it hard to punch it through. With the other ones, if you order them online, they're a harder plastic. You wouldn't have too much of a problem punching holes through them. Let's get the nose. I gotta do that one perfect. Okay. Right. Yeah, Hold the drill out there. Right. Right, this is uh, like I said, this is my first mask, and I'm using the actual mask from the Ruby's uh, hooded mask that you get from Ruby's for about sixty bucks, and. The mask in itself, I just didn't care for the colors of it. 
it just didn't look natural so I'm definitely going to go with a cream color look for um, Jason like it's traditional almost like his uh, uh, the first time he wore it in part three except it won't have the crack in the head but I'm not going to cut it all out like that I might do that as a future thing now if you ever want to learn how to do these things on a professional level there is a guy who does this on a regular basis his name is Big Hush fantastic youtuber he does a fantastic job on his masks it's ridiculous how cool he is with those things all right now with that you got to peel off all the broken pieces and stuff but we're not quite finished yet because we got a few more holes to drill here all right now Three more to drill, and then we're going to start taking that plastic off. And I don't want to drill through my hand. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Now that we got them all drilled out. <coughs> We're going to kind of snap these off. So what I'll do is I'll, you know, I'll snap off all the pieces and sand it all down. And I will be right back. Okay, we're back. And what I did is I kind of carefully drilled out all the holes and sanded it real good on both sides. And I'm using a primer, but it is called, it's a pearl mist. As you can see the color right here. The primer is not really significant. You can use black or any other kind of primer and stuff. But I use uh, Rust-Oleum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this with a primer, color it all with white, like a pearl white, and then we're going to take it from there. Okay. So with that in mind, let's just go ahead, get this thing going. There we go. All right. Gonna take a while to get this thing covered up. to shake it in order to come out and I haven't used this primer in a long long time so I'm thinking that I might have to get a different kind of primer altogether a darker primer well, the inside is not so much the major part uh, because obviously you're not going to see it I'm not going to use this to actually wear it I'm actually using it so I can correct the problems that I had. Slowly getting there, guys. You want to make sure you don't apply too much to it simply because you don't want it running as you see it stripping. <clears throat> so I got to let that dry, so I will be right back. Just want to show you real quick what it looks like up close and personal. Now, you'll notice this mask is like super wide. It is because uh, the uh, Ruby's hood or it's an entire mask then it comes with this hockey mask but it's incredibly wide and a real cheap plastic and like I said I kind of drilled out the holes and stuff what the heck was that? Uh, something red but anyway um, it's kind of got like a lot of dark uh, tones to it and this primer being that it's a pearl mist it's probably going to take a couple of applications just to get it to cover up a little bit 
But I just wanted to uh, show you what it looks like up close so far. Okay. We'll take some time to dry. Now I will need to go to Walmart and get some uh, supplies um, because I want to get um, a scraping tool and everything and a bunch of other paints because I actually got to paint on the chevrons. I got to make the actual molds for them because on JDF where they actually get those molds unfortunately they no longer um, I'm going to put this down here real quick alright they no longer um, are available to the public <clears throat> because he's been telling everybody that there's a lot of uh, resentment because people are obsessed with making their own Jason Voorhees masks and it's taken away from businesses so they're complaining about it so he just simply stopped uh, you know providing it so with that in mind I'm gonna have to figure out how to do the chevrons obviously each one of the masks are different when it comes to their chevrons I did um, get a hold of a YouTube uh, video that shows the dimensions so I will make a kind of like a mold or a frame form and then use um, actual um, painters tape for it and then you know make them out just like you do you see them on uh, YouTube and stuff but anyway long story short I'm gonna go ahead and have to do that myself but anyway it looks pretty good so far like I said it's got to dry I've got to put a couple of coats on it just to cover up all the blemishes from the original paint job like I said I really sanded the crap out of it but obviously it's because of the plastic and stuff and the way they painted it uh, you know obviously I got to resand it and reapply it so I just wanted to uh, let you guys see what it looks like so far Okay, right. I just we'll want to let right. you guys see what this thing looks like up close and personal because it is a pearl white primer uh, as you can see I did apply a little too much so I kind of carefully brush stroked it with a brush but at the same time I'm going to have to re-sand this just to smooth it out and reapply some more of the uh, primer but when I go to Walmart and stuff I'm definitely going to get different color primers maybe some darker ones but anyway I still got to throw a couple more coats of primer on this then we're going to take it from there because I got to go to Walmart grab different kind of paint because I want to give it a uh, like an almond color maybe a little bit darker with a little hint of yellow in it give it a more traditional original look and that's what I want to do with this mask here so it is a work in progress but I want to uh, see what it looks like as you can see I did apply a little too much of the uh, primer because I couldn't see the angles were wrong and it was kind of dripping off so that's why as you can see right here yeah it's kind of yeah it's a work in progress so keep in mind when you do spray paint these apply um, not so much just you know do it in stages it does take a little bit of time for these things to dry now I brought it in here because <clears throat> it is a little cold outside so it would take a little bit of time to dry out there so hopefully by the time I get home tonight should be good to go okay all right we'll be right back okay we're back and I gotta say what I initially did with this is actually let the uh, the pearl white uh, my, yeah the pearl white uh, primer dry on this and I'm going to show you what it looks like after sanding it completely uh, it doesn't look half bad but like I said it is just the beginning stages because I got to sand it still you can see the streaks here okay that's because I brush stroked it all right, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sand it down just so we can ca actually cover up all the um, uh, the faded colors that they had on this thing because it was in fact mass produced and obviously the colors do fade after a while and they look a little different but as you can see the holes are in fact drilled all right so this is actually um, the primer part of it so I'm going to resand it and I'm going to come up with a different kind of color scheme for this because the head that this is going to go on is in fact gray in color so I want to keep it close to that or close to the original color if at all possible keep in mind this is just a first shot uh, if it's not exact and I like the way it looks then I'm okay with it but I'm going to try to get as close as possible to the original design color wise I do have um, some yellow and some brown. I'm going to try to blend them together a little bit just to see if I can get a close almond color if I can possibly do that. But anyway, right now I am going to be in the process of sanding this and I'm going to show you what it looks like after I sand it. 
So I will be right back. Okay, we are back again. And I will tell you this, I did struggle with the color. Because I wanted to try to get as close as I can to the almond color. It is a little bit darker than usual. But once I put the chevrons on this, I think it will be good to go. And then we can go ahead and throw some clear lacquer on it. And she should be good to go. But anyway, here's what she looks like. Alright. It's got a nice little color now. It was at one time a little darker. But I said when I took it to the uh, the head in the other room, I said that's way too dark. So this is pretty close to what uh, the NECA figure, the NECA um, mask is. It's kind of like an off tan. But I'd like to get it a little lighter. But it is what it is. I don't want to waste too much paint. Not on the very first mask. But anyway, that is what she looks like. So I just got to wait for it to dry. And then um, I'm going to put the chevrons on it, paint them on, and then we're going to give it a final coat of lacquer. Be right back, guys. Okay, we are back. And let me tell you, putting these chevrons on was a freaking nightmare, okay? If you don't get these right, they look totally messed up. Now, these are not 100% perfect, but I accidentally got the color scheme pretty much close to the original mask. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. But keep in mind the chevrons are not 100% perfect, but they are not that bad either. So here we go, guys. All right. Now lining these things up with the tape and everything, it's got to be an easier way, all right? Now as you'll notice, the top part of it right here, um, I kind of messed up because I put a little too much um, paint on it. So I had to brush it around a little bit just to get some kind of unique shape out of it. Um, with a q-tip and stuff like that but it's not that bad as you can see the color scheme is not that bad especially for what it used to look like now the last thing I gotta do with this thing right now I'm not gonna scuff it or anything like that I wanna keep it the way it is is I'm gonna go ahead and put some clear uh, coat uh, lacquer on it and then we should be good to go on this thing this is my first uh, attempt at doing these masks but it is a learning experience now I noticed when I uh, altered the paint and stuff like that because I actually put like three different colors on this and I finally got this one here it's got a cardboard look about it uh, maybe it's because it's an acrylic paint or something like that and if you brush it out which I did sand it a little bit okay uh, it does have like almost like a cardboard effect to it but it's not bad at all especially when you drill out the holes it looks it's, it's a vast big improvement over the original so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and lacquer this with some clear coat. And we should be good to go here, guys. All right, I will be right back. Well, we are back. Now, I just got done lacquering this or putting a clear coat on it. I put like two coats on it. And I don't think I want to put too much more on it. But I will tell you this, just from looking at it, it's not 100% perfect. But it is a massive improvement over what you would normally get with the Ruby's uh, Jason mask and the Jason hood. The mask was absolutely horrible, okay? But this is a vast improvement. Now, if you're following this video all the way from the beginning to the end, then you know how bad that mask looked, okay? But this is a vast improvement, and I did get lucky with the color, okay? I will tell you that. It does look really good, in my opinion, except for the chevrons. They're not 100% perfect, but they're okay for what they are. Anyway, I'm going to get ready to put on the actual straps because I don't plan on wearing this or anything. Uh, but I do plan on just displaying it and that's pretty much what this is. It's the original strap. All I got to do is just kind of glue it back together onto the back of this. And I got some Gorilla Glue for that and it should be good to go. Okay. But anyway, this is the end results of the, uh, the mask in itself. Okay. But anyway, yeah, okay, it looks, it doesn't look bad at all. But like I said, I got lucky with that color, okay? Anyway, thank you for uh, following me through this whole entire thing. This is my first time trying this. It didn't come out half bad, but at the same time, it's not 100% perfect. Uh, it's my first mask. Now I know what I need to do. I'm going to be doing some more masks, but they will take some time, okay? You have to be really intricate and, uh, you know, pretty much take your time sanding and doing whatever is required to get this thing perfect. The colors, when it comes to the paint, have got to be perfect, okay? 
unless you're going to go through a crazy scheme like um, the uh, YouTuber Big Rush, or Big Big Hush, not Big Rush. I'm sorry about that. He does all kinds of crazy stuff, and he knows how to color those things in. Now I'm gonna follow him big time and watch what he does, just to do some, um, you know, pretty much close to what he does, design wise. Anyway, um, color wise on this, I didn't want to do too much to it, simply because it's just uh, display purposes, and it's just a mask for the hood or the mask for the mask, more or less. Anyway, I'll show you what that looks like here in a second once uh, everything's glued on and it gets dry. I will uh, show you the video of the actual mask on the hood itself. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I appreciate you sticking around. Don't forget, don't go anywhere yet because I will show you that uh, mask, uh, the hockey mask with the mask, okay? It is a full-size mask. It's not a hood. Uh, but anyway, I'll show you what it looks like once I get it together, okay? i got to pretty much, you know, put the strap on and let it dry. Okay, see you guys in a second. Okay, guys, here's what she looks like on the hood, or in this case, the full mask. And i got to say, it is a massive improvement over the last one. So there you go. It is my first attempt at doing a Jason Voorhees re uh, rehaul, more or less. To repaint I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something from it as I am learning in the process uh, I probably will be doing some more masks but the whole Chevron thing I'm definitely going to have to figure out an easier way to put them on here but anyway long story short this is my Jason Voorhees mask uh, from Ruby's yeah, new and improved in my opinion but anyway don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be pushing out some more videos. This is Pumpkin Heart. You guys have yourselves a good day. Oh, one last thing before I let you guys go. Look at Mr. Ugly. Okay? This is why he wears the mask, okay? He's not very handsome, alright? But anyway, that's a Ruby's mask, okay? It's a full-size mask. They do uh, actually make hoods that don't have the face and all you got to do is just place the, uh, the hockey mask over your face and you can breathe out of it. This thing here is absolutely huge. I got a big head and it's too big for my head, okay? So it kind of flops around and stuff. So I just use it for display purposes only. But anyway, this is um, pretty much it in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys at the next video.